Now, um, this is exciting for me because I am falling in love with press books. Um, so we've got a, an activity sheet for you. And if you signed up, you have an account on Pressbooks. You also have, in Canvas, if you go to canvas.mispray.edu, sign up ahead of time, um, you'll have access to a sandbox that says, make your own books with Pressbooks. Oh. And that has what's called kinds of things. So one other thing that I will mention about why I like Pressbooks as an authoring platform. So like CSR, CSCR, if you build something in CSCR, and then you um, embed it or put it into a Canvas or a learning management system, it's great. But if you want to make any changes, you got to go back to CSCR, make the changes, re-download, <laughs> re-upload. With Pressbooks, if you make any change in Pressbooks and you have uh, already sent it off to Canvas, it will make the change in Canvas. Now, you've got to be careful. There are some changes that it kind of has a hard time with. <laughs> it kind of translates kind of funky. But by and large, I loved it. Like if there was just some minor you know, editing or something I had to do, I would do it in Pressbooks. And then anywhere where I had published uh, in the learning management system, it automatically showed up. And it was just like, this is awesome and magic. So. Right. So, um, in Canvas, if you go to your Make Your Own Books on Pressbooks course, which you should be finding your dashboard, or in courses, all other courses, uh, depending on how many you already have, we've got a little front page sheet here, Pressbooks page K, where we have a bunch of different examples. So we can see his Pressbook if you want to go in there and just see exactly what he used and go and check that out, the bad formatting at all. That's fine. Um, Karen made a chapter today, or this week, yesterday, or the day before, that includes interactive H5P content for knowledge checks. Uh, did I still not add that? I didn't add my. <coughs> uh, we've got a uh, active teaching lab e journal. I'm very excited about it. Um, because it's all of our old active teaching labs, all the recaps, all put together. So, what it is. And um, I mean, all the way back to our first one, Google Plus with Mike McGuire, video in there, kind of things like that. We don't have any interactive H5P content yet, but, but that's OK. We'll, we'll get it here eventually. Um, and then the activity sheet is down below here somewhere. There it is. But you also have a copy right here. So all of the links, if you want to click on the links to see different things, go on to the Canvas site. And if you're not on the Canvas site, let me know, and I can add you. And I'll do that. All right? Play around for a little bit. Dig in. Talk to your neighbors. Figure this stuff out. And then we'll ask some, we'll have some better questions in a little bit. And grab a coffee. All right. But yes, that's, I've been working on that for about nine months now. Yeah. Um, H5P is instru 
you H5P can produce what are called X API statements, which can be sent to a learning record store and you can do anything you want with those, including LTI or gradebook integrations. We'd have to build the integration that records that information. Mm -hmm. What I'm working on in building is a, instead of producing X API statements, we want caliper analytics statements. Those are the kind of, they're, they're comparable to XAPI, but that's what the Unison Consortium wants all of its member schools to use that's to record kind of learner behavior. Okay. So the, the long answer is, uh, it's definitely on my radar. It's something I very much want to happen. It's a little bit outside of my power because we have to pay for some development. Mm -hmm. So I've been pushing really hard. Uh, I know campus leadership is interested, but, but they've declined to pay for it directly and asked me to ask Unison to pay for it. So it. that's where we're at right now. I'm hopeful that Unison will pay for it, and I think enough people care about this that it will be paid for, but I don't have any strong timeline for people. Well, that would actually be that big stuff. We'll solve babies. <laughs> but we do have, right now, we have a means to take a press book and bring in all the text, as James described, into Canvas in an organized format. Uh, they're embedded in those pages, as James showed, and we have the ability to make really unlimited H5Ps. You just can't get any learner behavior. Out of, it. out of it. So H5P is great for knowledge checks, self checks for the, for the students. Yeah, and because they're repeatable, and they're really probably best for formative assessments anyway. You don't want your high stakes grade to be something they could repeat and just do over and over, you know. You, do, you can embed, I have embedded uh, Google Forms in there. Yeah, absolutely. They, they just go right into Canvas. So you can get data out. It's not like you can pass that to the book, but it's performative assessment. No, I've used to actually gather data, 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 but you'd have to, the, the, the H5P are going to make all these XAPI statements, and you have to have something that says, I want to listen for this, I want to listen for this, so you tell it what you want to listen for, grades or whatever, and then once you store that, you want to say, then, take what I listen for, do this with it, and so those are the two pieces that we, no one's built yet, or not no one here is built. Where do you, where is the information that you use this? Well, we calculate what's the interface for you to use. You have to export it. Is it the so there is no interface. Then you have to go export it someplace else. To well, that. Yeah. Oh, he, he answered. So two things are happening. One is natively, a very small amount of information is going to be stored to the. So no, I'm not bad at this. And track this kind of that's going to be how long they took to do it. Like a couple of very basic pieces of information. But at the same time, that out. every click they make is generating an X API statement. And they're just going into space unless you build a listener. So they hooked it to like, whatever you want to listen for, you can. You tell it what you want to listen for, you store that information, and then do whatever you want with it. So H5P is spinning out all of this data. But it's just, it's just being swept away because we're not listening to it. And it's doing it in a format that's the, like the state-of-the-art format, except that XAPI came out right, first, and now Caliper Analytics has come out much newer, no one's really talking about it, but that's what I am talking about. Well, they're only the yeah, they're talking about. I mean, like, people are talking to each other about getting more on the same thing. A little bit, yeah. I don't think that's likely to happen anytime soon, because they're very much in the future. But we're in a community where they want Caliper Analytics. They're going to be more recent than these new specifications. And Caliper Analytics has the additional problem. Like it's a bunch of implementation. All right, Catherine, the way to add meaning is action. The specification is actual. A few chapter already added. Good. We've got a bunch of hairy problems, but we've got some hairy things. We should be able to well. So I was just grabbing, you know, females a lot too. John, you know, I use actually the public academy class. I've just been grabbing the HTML. What do you need to go for? Yeah, go back. Oh, that's how we built that package. We just grabbed the HTML from from the WordPress current WordPress built. I throw it over and it's just boom, boom, boom. boom. Two cards. Got it. Right. One and a half card. Oh, okay. Right. Right. That's just not the case. Easy. No. So, so, so what is it? That's uh, cool. Uh, it's, it's the first gen. It's a really good one. Oh, wow. I really recommend this question. Probably on the laptop. Oh, you're serious.
Right. So that's the yeah. almost okay. basal bezel. Yeah. So Kevin, your your Pressbooks password is not going to be the same as your UW password. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want me to add you as your neighbors with you? As but Jesse and I have our Maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. We might consider buying a house to rent. Yeah, that one you could get into, right? Oh, that's right. It's got a one card. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's yeah. 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 I don't think they're going to get that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So you'll notice that if you use WordPress, this is all very familiar. people can work in the same book, no problem. Only one person in one chapter at a time. You Otherwise, one active editor will kick the other person out. So for this exercise, since we're all in here, every, I would say everybody make your own chapter. Yeah, make your own chapter. Right. And then you can work in that. Awesome. And then you can put your name on the other chapter. Add your images. I know. I have to do that too. And then the password is insane. Well, you've got another chapter. Yeah, just you can click on add chapter and we can have as many chapters in there as we want. John, you invite people to that sandbox? Yes. Of course. Okay. Did Would you invite me? Yes, I did. Thank you. All right. You should have it and it should say John Martin sandbox, but they should have a little picture of press books on it. Oh. Okay. You might have too many other courses right now that it doesn't show up unless you click on all courses. Oh, okay. Active teaching lab and that's probably a better idea since it's like I got if you get rid of the like, <coughs> those are the ones if we had audio only. Are you talking about in Pressbooks or in Canvas? Canvas. <laughs> oh, no, Pressbooks. In Pressbooks, yeah. There's, you probably have last year's as well. Okay. Yeah. So this one says okay. Active Teaching Lab Pressbooks. Okay. okay. That one I have in the sandbox of Canvas. Yeah. Okay. No, that would be helpful. Are you editing on an iPhone? No, I'm just looking. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's probably easier to dictate than to type. <coughs> You're doing that video with the H5P content? Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I was like, I don't need to be doing this entire thing. It was pretty cool. But it shows a really good example of some of the different things you can do with it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. Is that the natural ingredient? Yeah, yeah. Try not like probably So the thing is, I got this. I got that one wrong because I wanted to see what happens if you get it wrong. They make you start the whole thing over again. So that's a little bit too steep. Yeah, probably. Right. Get to it, but just. I know I could Google it. I'm just being lazy. Yeah. So H5P content is available in all <laughs> kinds of places. Including cannabis. Including cannabis. And including anywhere. Including something that's a website. Including something that's a website. <laughs> so you can't embed it in your also <laughs> FYI, if you want to, you can also put your Kaltura media inside of H5P players. Mm -hmm. But that's a separate uh, can you put H5P content inside your Kaltura? You would never want to do that. No. <laughs> uh, all H5P is is really a player. That's okay. why I really want to do that. That's all it is. It's like it's a little window, and the window shows your content. Is it an iframe? Yeah. And so what you can do is when you're creating interactive content, like an interactive video, you provide it with a URL of where your video is hosted, so and there is a Kaltura URL you can get to your media that works with it. Correct. So if people are interested, just email josh.harder at wist.edu. What do you mean by interactive video? What's that? It allows you to do, it's an H5P okay. activity type. So, so but you can just it. Basically, a, you could put different video. prompts on there at different time there's points for your students to interact with it, such as so like, uh, you get a hotspot, you have quizzes, you yeah. have different interactions in the video at different points in time. You could have... For example, on the, if you go to the Canvas site, there, that's how I was playing with the CD video. Yeah, that's a good one. So there's a lot of different yeah. interaction things you can that's, try out. That smoothie one is right from H5P's homepage. They have some great examples of the different kinds of uh, content interactions yeah, you can create. Will you go to the Canvas homepage? H5P oh, demo so of interactive video. My question is, should we use the interactive no. video editor in no, H5P no. or the oh, interactive yeah, with very, the very yeah. Um I would yeah. say, like almost everything I tell everyone, it depends on what you're trying to do and the kinds of interactions you're trying to foster with your students. Um, so there's some affordances in using the interactive video player in Kaltura. If you're also in Canvas, because it allows you to pump things into the gradebook, it has that LTI integration. Yep. Um, whereas the H5P doesn't, but the experiences and interface that you get from the H5P H5P player are much richer uh, and more uh, flexible <coughs> for what you want to do potentially. Uh, the interactive video quizzing in Kaltura only lets you do multiple choice. <coughs> this lets you do multiple assessments. Yes, yeah, deal. In six to nine months. Pending the funding, this will be the place to do it all because we'll have the the one thing that the, the thing that Kaltura interactive video does that we that H5P doesn't do is send stuff to Gradebook, and uh, that's why I've been pushing so hard on this piece and why I really hope it happens. But until it does, it's like a fancy thing, but goes that is only for your students' benefit. It's a vision Unless of the future is what it is. Yeah, and that that exists right now that you can start to play with and start thinking about. What kind of content do you want to build for next time that you redesign a course, maybe? Yeah. So let's go through this right now. There's your first pop-up so there you if you want to interact with it. Oh, greetings, what's up? Oh, you're going to yep. say, you go so back. That's, so it's a, it's a good display of what you can set on the different interactions. So there, it's setting it to show up from starting at a time point to ending at a time point, and it doesn't pause the video. And it's got this little thing, these little bars down the bottom. Oh. All right, so I got that. That's called a hot spot. <laughs> Strawberries. <laughs> well, what was this quiz? All right, let's see. What well, kind of a berry is this? The student has to, has to click on it, otherwise it will just keep going. Correct. That's, a, that's an option. So oh, you can actually, option. when the thing pops up, there's a little checkbox that says pause the video when it pops up. So whoever you can make them do it or you can let yeah. them ignore it. Immediate gratification. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody pay attention.
attention. What do you see yeah. so far? Oops, oh. 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 How many John. variants have been no, added no. so far? John answered it before he even read it. What? Oh, no. Like a true student. <laughs> okay, so this was confusing me. I thought I had to click to pause it before it kept on going. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even have a chance to. All right, well, no. you, you I always read the instructions. Hold the drug out. You can fast forward it. That's what you do for not paying attention. I think if that's a choice, you could send them to a point in the video based on their response if you want, but your quiz is up if you want to take it. It's testing you on your I'm going to ignore this one, and I'm just going to wait for the next one. Here we go, here we go. The next one's going to be It's going to pause, right? I'm not going to get a chance. Strawberry. All right. Blueberries. I like the ingredients. Blueberries and strawberries. This is a hot spot thing, okay? There you go. So check? Yes? Yeah. Yay! Yeah. 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 Come on, cookies in there. Save your progress. She's the crux. What do we do? And who's testing? Answer the second question. Saves your progress. What second question? That's, That's right there. Right there. Right there. Right. Choose the correct statement. Choose the correct Oh, change. Yeah, you get. There you go. See, I thought I didn't read. I thought they were the same thing. It's a tiny umbrella. No, we didn't use an umbrella. Yeah, it's tricky. Wrong. Yeah. That's fun. All right. So this is, good job. This is video. you can add the same kind of content in anything else. Now, here's a, an interesting thing. Let's just go through that real quick. Um, where's the drag and drop? The drag and drop one. So this is one about the berries, right? And dropping the berries into the blender. I found that this was wonky for me because I was using Chrome. So there were times when I would create the create the thing and I would try to click on it and it would say, okay, drag it. And it wouldn't let me <coughs> click. So wherever my cursor went, it followed. And the only thing I could do is double click on it and then restart it. But then I opened it up in Firefox and it worked fine. And ever since then, it's been working fine in Chrome. Uh, so <laughs> these are weird. And like the user interface and creating these is not intuitive. And it takes a little bit of time to explore them. Like even knowing what they are, drag and drop I get, but there's a whole bunch of there's a whole bunch of these that like, I don't know what these are. So that's why going to the H5P. What what I would recommend actually uh, is just next to the you see that little blue eye tutorial available. Correct. Uh, if you're beginning to do something for the first time, I would strongly encourage you to read the tutorial and then do it. 
And I had to do it your own way too, if you want. And I would say the, the intuitiveness is a matter of opinion because me, I actually prefer form-based things. And that's what this is, it's form-based. Instead of what you see is what you almost get, which is what you usually get with WYSIWYG interfaces. It's never what you see is what you get, it's what you see is what you almost get. <laughs> so yeah, different people, different things. Different strokes for different folks. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Anyway, yeah, so what do you guys think? Useful for the chemistry learning center? The chemistry department is redoing their entire curriculum to be more active learning. So I think if you can incorporate the grading into that. Uh, Rachel Bain is unaware of a press book. She's been using these for some chemistry active learning activities, yeah. and we would love to. They've got so much them. money there. <laughs> They'll pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to see one of them this afternoon. I'm chat. So. Yeah, thanks, Other thoughts? Julie? You know, I don't think we actually showed a picture of the multiple choice or any of the H5P in just a press book page. I don't think we ever showed one of that, one of those. I can tell you some examples if you or don't have one in mind already. We may do. Oh, you did. Okay, great. Um, <coughs> Yep. yep. All right, so Blackhawk, pictures, tag, statue. There's a, that right there, that statue is a image with, um, oh, yep. we might have got this on it. Thanks, the hotspot. Hotspot. Hotspots can include text, they can also include video or images in those little hotspots. Uh -huh. There's a link in that. And links. Hotspot too. There you go. I have maps that show you exactly where it's located. Mm -hmm. And it's interactive. So you're yeah. like, well, where is that? Like, oh, okay, I don't even know where that is. It's in the Midwest. Oh, oh, there it is. It's in Illinois. Yeah, okay. All right. You so all the choice to is in Pressbooks. Blackhawk was leader. Which tribe? The first one's hot. Okay. Yep. Correct. Which of the following was not one of the battles discussed in the text? The first one. Yeah, the first one. You guys wrote this too? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Learn if you want, you can also, there. instead of making individual questions, there's the ability to do a many question quiz in H5P, which can include up to five question types. They have or four or five question types. Is that the question set? It's called the question ah. set, yeah. And then the interactive presentation one that I did at one point, which was kind of neat because you get the multiple choices, or I'm sorry, multiple pages of things. So if any of you were here for Sway, similar stuff there with the, with the yeah. interactivity. I think you can embed some quizzing in there as well. Correct. You can have so many types yep. of quizzes on the interactive. So it program. kind of is an updated, I'm not going to say updated version of CSDR. It performs some of the same tests that ACSDR. Indeed. Other thoughts. You know what I like about this, even if your your class is face to face, you can still set yourself where when you where you want to read the chapter before you have the class. You have to like see it. Set it up this way, and they have a quiz, and then this way they can have the class when they're done reading, and they're really prepared for the page. Yes. So this can be an interactive lecture, whether it's the talking head or or the reading that you give them with knowledge checks throughout there, and ideally. You'd be able to hold them accountable in six to nine months where that would actually show up in their grade books to know that they prepared. But even without, like it's it's certainly better than just reading and not knowing what exactly. I'm reading. Exactly. Yeah. 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 We had an active teaching lab last two semesters ago um, where Coralie talked about using CSCR to flip her class and have an interactive um, You're right there. Other thoughts? Are you still in nursing? Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. I have some colleagues who tried to do flip and it wasn't very really successful, but I think incorporating more of this would definitely add to the experience. It's, it's kind of a conceptual thing, because if you look at how you have to design a flipped classroom or online or blended in a learning management system, all those things are disparate parts, right? The student had to click here, then they have to go to the next tool, the next tool, the next tool to have the whole experience of that unit or that lesson. And this kind of has the potential to package some of those yeah. things. Mm -hmm. So it kind of takes the burden, the cognitive burden of knowing where you need to go and how you need to do it. Away. Yeah, putting interactions contextualized in their larger yeah. flow of learning. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The other thing that I want to stress is 
the, the major use case for Pressbooks, the whole reason why I really worked on developing this and making this available, is not necessarily for teaching in the LMS. Mm -hmm. This is something that James mentioned in his presentation, but what Pressbooks allows you to do is to publish and share open textbooks. That's really what we want to do, so that each Pressbooks page will have its own landing page on the public web that lets anyone who wants to, even without logging into your LMS, read your text and or download it in these various formats. So what you're doing is making a book that, that you've produced, that's your intellectual property, free and publicly available to anyone. It's open education. And that's the kind of larger vision why this is an interesting, exciting tool. It may not be what your intention is doing. You might be wanting to teach for a closed classroom. But this can do that if that's something that matters to you. Does anyone in the world look at it? Correct. If you want. And as with yeah. anything, start easy. Like, you can always go back to press books and add more content to it, add more interactions to it. But just start with the content itself as a WordPress site or ebook with no interactivity. Add a simple interaction, get used to it, do those five times, go in and learn another interaction, and you know, build up. So I was going to ask a question. You mentioned uh, one can use it for a book and can publicize the book. So I'm just wondering about um, a, a treatment or an intervention. I mean, I, yes. I work in depression and I've developed a depression treatment. So if I wanted to just sort of disseminate it, you know, then I can actually use this. Yeah, we should talk. So my name is Steele Wagstaff. I work for the College of Letters and Science. And I've been working on developing this tool and got it hosted at Unison, which is a larger consortium. Mm -hmm. I now have, I was given funds from Central Campus to hire a graduate assistant for this coming academic year. Mm -hmm. that, and, and they're exclusively dedicated to producing what are called open educational resources, OER. And we can serve the whole university, even though I don't work for the whole university, I just work for this phone call. So if you have a project that sounds of interest and you want to work with this, you can talk to me and I'm happy to help do some project management for you. Thank you. When I was playing with this, the other thing that I noticed is how you can set the chapter copyright license. I just found that interesting. You know, there's several choices here. Correct. And I chose one. Yeah. And it's chapter by chapter as well, right? So chapter some things can be. The book itself will have a license that it's published under, and you can vary it for individual chapters if they have a different okay. copyright regime. Yeah. I want to be respectful of the time.